Welcome back to episode three of Paradoxes. Paradoxes, just to briefly recap, are either an incongruity between reality and logic, reality and what a general intuition would be, or by a stricter definition, between reality and logic itself. For example, this statement I'm making right now is a lie, is a classic example of a paradox. This, uh, this episode, Matt is gonna be introducing a paradox. Matt, if you'd like to take it away. Thank you, Mikey. Um, so the paradox I wanted to share with you all today is called the ship of Theseus. Um, and it's really a thought experiment that kind of just asks, asks the question, um, do, we, do we still attain our identity if we're all um, replaced? So like, for example, we take a ship, um, say like at a museum, and if the ship begins to deteriorate and you start replacing that ship, eventually you'll get to a point where all of the pieces on the ship have been replaced, but they're identical. And the question is then, is that the same ship? Does it still attain its identity before? Is it still the ship that you originally put on the grounds of that museum? Or is it uh, completely different? So wow. what, what do you guys think of that? Holy, let's just take a step back and just appreciate how good of a paradox this is, okay? This is actually something I've thought about before. I'm not gonna lie. For the reason that I'm, I, I'm a big history guy, okay? So I love going to see World War II stuff, right? Go like to go into museums, seeing, and, you know, Europe, Europe artifacts. And so, like, stuff has been restored, right? And does that mean, you know, even if it's a, if it's a complete restoration, does that make it, like, any less real? Or, like, does it make it any less valuable? If you're thinking about buying it, at least, because I, I know it's really easy to put, like, value on things to make it, like, give it a perspective. So, um, in my opinion, I would say yes. So... You think it is the same ship, or you think it's not? I don't think it's the same ship. So I'm not sure the of, if there's a right answer or a wrong answer, but I'm, that's what I would go with for the reason that I think it, it it should retain the original material that it's made out of. You know, because a ship is obviously something that we think of in our minds and make that like idea, that object up. But I think it, if you're going to have like the same ship, it has to have the same material. That's really interesting because I can see that point. Let me ask you this question though, Nick, because you see, yeah, yeah. Throw it at me, throw it at me. let's say that, let's say to make the numbers easy, that there's a thousand planks on the ship. Okay. Is it the same ship after one plank's been taken away? Mm -hmm. It is. What about if after 10 planks have been taken away? It's probably still the same ship. What about after a hundred planks have been taken away and replaced and replaced with, with new ones? So yeah, I see where you're getting at. I definitely see where you're coming from. I think if all if all the planks are replaced though, doesn't that make it a new a new thing? Even though okay, yes, you can still call it the USS Chalice, but is it the, still the same chip? If it's replaced with different sheet metal, that's all new. Right? Like the USS Chalice, okay? Let's pretend this was a, you know, World War II battleship that took down Japanese aircraft carriers, okay? Touching that ship, right. touching that ship in 1944 with that sheet metal versus a reconstruction in 2020 with different sheet metal, completely new everything because it was deteriorating. Is that still the USS Chalice or is that just a model of the USS Chalice? Oh, no, that's a good, that's a good question. So just take, take this one lightly, okay? Okay, but let me ask you this question. No, don't ask the question. Answer my question, then then ask me a question. I'll ask you this question. This, I'll ask you a question that I think even asks the same question you're asking, but answers it as well. What if the USS Chalice was used in World War I and World War II? And during World War I, it suffered significant damages. And 50% uh, of the planks were taken out and replaced. Mm. Then during World War II, the other 50% of the planks which were from the original boat when it was created, are taken out and then replaced. So now you have no planks from the World War I battles, half the plank, or no planks from pre-World War I, half the planks that went through all of World War II, and half brand new planks. Then is it the same boat? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm going to... Since it doesn't have the original planks, in my mind, I'm saying that no, it's not the same boat, even though we are calling it the same thing. But I can also call another boat the USS Chalice. 
Alice, right? But like that's just a label that I'm putting on the actual boat. Like I think it becomes a new thing, but like we're like we're naming it the same thing. So in our minds, yes, it's still the USS Chalice. But I think if you're looking, like, I guess it depends if... what part. I guess it depends what p parts you're looking at, right? Because yes, like you another this... question. Okay, keep firing them off. What if I have a boat with a thousand pieces, like we've been saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, and as each piece wears away, it gets taken out, replaced with a new piece, and then the old piece that was worn away and taken away from the original ship is re is refreshed and renewed. And once all a thousand pieces from the old ship have been replaced. They put together a new ship that is exactly the same. So now you have two ships right next to each other, one with the original planks and one that was of the original name. So ship one or ship A and ship B, is, are either of them the real ship of Theseus or are neither of them or are both of them? I have no idea. I kind of got lost there. Like I, I think with that, Mikey, it, it's more about a question of do you look towards meaning of like what you put towards like and an, like animate objects or is it more of like the like the real um like object so like for example um yes i think that if you completely replace a say like a ship like we've been talking about it does become a new object but the meaning of that ship stays with you so that connection um is still alive so i would say in that sense it stays the ship of or the uh, ss chalice or whatever which one though the first one or the second one because the second one has every single piece of the first one in the exact same place it was, refreshed and renewed. I would, I would say the, the one that had the original pieces. So you think that the original one, is, which is the one that's been put together from old pieces, should be? That's interesting. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I don't know the answer to these questions. I just think it's fun to ask them versus answer them. Yeah, I think... Uh... It depends what part you focus on because yeah. it's going to push you like think about it like a seesaw right one side you have the connection to the name to you know the name of the for example uss chalice on one end of the seesaw and then the other end of the seesaw you have its physical material makeup you can't have both if you think about it like if you're going to replace the parts you can't have both and for your two ship scenario you're going to have one on each side so if you're leaning towards the material way, it's going to put you on ship B for the real ship or, you know, in that instance. But if you're focusing on the, the inanimate object connection, um, that's going to be on, you know, ship A side. So I think it kind of, you, I guess we, with this discussion, we've whittled it down to two scenarios. It just depends what you value, I guess, as a human. I completely agree with that. So I think that I think this paradox is deeper than we're realizing, you know. I 100% agree. Can we can we jump even more deeper into the rabbit hole, please? Mm. Well, before we do that, can I ask? Because I've been thinking. I think about I would invite this jump. <laughs> can I jump in for a second? And I've so I've thought of this. <laughs> we're doing a lot of jumping, lot. aren't we? <laughs> the I think that there's two there's two basic answers, three basic answers to the to the question. There's the semantics answer of saying whatever boat is referred to as the ship. Like if I say to the population of Athens, hey, look mm -hmm. at this, which, let's go to the ship of Theseus or whatever, then the boat that they go to is that boat because it is the boat that corresponds to the name. So it's just like, a, it's really a question of semantics. That's one answer. I think the second answer is to say that there's some sort of transcendental essence to each, each object and each thing. And so then the original boat stays it, even if all the pieces are replaced tenfold, 10 times over because it has a trans it has an essence about it it's the essence of the boat something that is not not a physical characteristic that can be measured rather it's some form of uh, like just i mean the best word is essence that exists within it or yeah and then i think the third answer and the one that i think is probably the most fascinating is that time is nothing more than another of the three dimensions or four dimensions and so at all points different things so when it was originally made and and uh, when it was completely re re refreshed with new pieces, those two boats are completely unrelated to each other because every moment exists in its own reality, un unaffected by the past, present, or past or future. So those are my three takes on the possibilities of the answers to the question. I, I don't know which one is right. Wow. That was a bombshell. <laughs>
And let's okay. So let's take that. You even let me get my nuclear shelter, Thomas. Okay. <laughs> let's let's take that explanation, Mikey, which are very good points, and let's add it to a more complex, um, and even more deeper environment. Let's look at ourselves. Hmm. So, let me uh, let me put down some information. Mm-hmm. Our body cells, our so, our somatic cells, they uh. They completely recycle. I wouldn't say recycle, but they are replaced every seven years. So from your birth to when you're seven years old, you are the same person, give or take. But after that seven year, uh, after you, you turn seven, you go on, your cells are completely replaced and you have a whole fresh new of cells, so somatic cells. My question is then, going with this paradox, is that after that point, are you a complete, is your, has your identity changed? Are you still the same person? Like, what is happening? He, he just did it to us. Nick, he just did it to us. I'm, I'm still lost, to be honest. Is there a way you could re-clarify? Okay, so you have your stoma, which right. are your skin cells, your organ cells. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. And then okay. you have your germ, which is oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. your your sperm or your egg if you're a female. Big big fan, big fan. Yeah. Um, so oh, your eggs. stoma go through mitosis, um, and they are replaced after, say, your cell hits your Hayflick limit, which is the amount of uh, cycles they can go through mitosis, and then they die. And around seven to ten years, all of your cells in your body, your your stoma, your uh, skin cells, for example, are replaced to where you have a whole fresh new of cells that were not on your person when you were originally born. So my question is, is at that point where you get a whole replacement of cells, are you a whole different person? Has your identity changed? Or are you still that same person you were um, before that? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much just diving deeper into the rabbit hole of this paradox. And so that's tough too, because it depends if the person looks exactly the same, because that also means, you know, this is also leading to other things like, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. It's like, obviously you're going to look like the same Matt Morris that we know, but inside all your cells are different, but we would not have known that unless we were told. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that also comes with like perception. And if like, if you like okay if you look a little different your cells have changed but you're still called matt morris and we know that like that's where it comes i think can like i think human connection to different things comes i think higher into play like if it's just a if it's just a a warship you know and we called the uss chalice okay yes it did us a great back in those years okay killed a lot of japanese aircraft carriers but that being destroyed and us building a new aircraft carrier would not be the same as us losing like a family member, right? Or mm-hmm. the or our family member being altered rather than the ship. And so I think like with my original answer that I would say that the ship would be totally different if everything was replaced. I don't think I would say the same if, you know, if a close friend of mine had all new cells, I wouldn't call him anything different. So I think that's where it's like the the connection you have and the time you've spent um, and kind of like how we operate as humans is like we go for connection, right? We need to have that that sense. So I think that plays a huge role into into kind of this paradox. Mm -hmm. Mikey, what do you think? Um, I mean, I I maintain probably the three uh, uh, realities of the ship analogy with respect to this. And there's obviously the argument that what I call Matt Morris is Matt Morris. It doesn't really matter the reality behind it. It's, it's really just an issue of, of relating a, a word to, a, to a, a, something that exists within reality. I, I think that argument actually falls a little bit short when you think about it with respect to humans, because it becomes a little bit, it comes a little bit weak. It's like, oh, okay, so you call them this because names become, I don't think that argument stands up so well. But the other two arguments, I think, still stand up perfectly. You could argue that you are a completely different person, not only because of your cells replacing, in fact, completely unrelated to your cells replacing. You're a different person because the reality you exist in now is something bestowed upon you by your past self, which you have no control over in any way, shape, or form. 
all you have control over is the current moment and the decisions you make now. So there's only a causal relate link between your past self and your future self, which is you. So it doesn't matter whether your uh, cells all change or they don't change. You you exist within a reality of of of, of the present, which which is unrelated which is unrelated to your past, except for through like the causal links that you've that have created the, the situation you're in right now. Or you could take the other perspective and say, no, 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 there is a transcendental essence of Matt Morris. It's the, it's the, it's the essence of you, which, mean, which is why you react the same way yesterday as you did today, because there's something innate within you that your cells, that the, the, the addition of all your cells create who you are. It's not, what's, it's not the cells themselves, but it's the order in which they're, the, like the way that they're built around a person. So, I, I mean, I don't know. It depends really on your like, relationship with time, I guess. Mm-hmm. The way I think about it is um, more kind of what I described earlier with like uh, your like personal meaning to something and then also like the physical reality of the replacement. Um, but like in terms of people, um, yes, our stomatic cells are replaced every seven to 10 years, but our brain cells aren't replaced. So like our neurons or synapses are, they're there when we're born and they're there when we die um, for the most part. So you could even like, start talking about like, yeah, your body's replaced, but your brain isn't, or, or um, going even more like philosophical, your consciousness um, is staying static while your uh, physical body is actually like being um, changed or altered. Um, but that's, that's like, that's just like something I think about. Yeah, but imagine if the reality of biology was not that way and your brain cells also replaced. Do you think that you would become, Dick, do you think if that would be the case though, that you would actually become a different person then every time that your brain cells would be replaced or? Uh, no, I don't think you'd become a different person because your brain cells get replaced. I, I think that what makes you, you isn't, isn't your brain, like isn't the, the specific cells. If you think about it, the atoms that make up your body are ever changing, but it's not about the atoms. It's the same thing as saying that, uh, you know, a, a piece of code is only compi- only a compilation of one, zeros and ones. Oh, you know, code changes with the zeros and ones. It doesn't really matter what the zeros and ones are. It matters their function. So I think like who I am isn't the brains, isn't the cells that make up my body and brain. Who I am is is the decisions I make and the way that those cells make up and the ways that those cells react. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. yeah i'm still going with you can take the exact opposite i'm still going with my approach that i think you know it it depends but i think <laughs> with with how much connection you have to something is going to determine whether it's still the same or not and i think like even if your brain cells change if i still call you matt everyone else still calls you matt like you even call yourself Matt, like that's still going to make you Matt. Does that make sense? Like, but if we start calling you something different, if all your cells have change and then collectively and even yourself that you think you're different and you start going under a different alias, then you have, you have changed. The object is not the same. So I think it's yeah, like exactly. what you perceive and what the greater world perceives because that's like what you live in and that's how things are determined that's how we can know what object is which and who is who so i think it's a second that (laughs) oh if you and nick were to switch consciousnesses then i would exist i would still i would maintain that you become nick and nick becomes you and since you since who you as the essence of who you are is now inhabiting a different body, which by definition has all different cells, it still maintains who you are as a person. So you're saying that if my consciousness, or you say like my brain was transferred to Nick, you would then start calling me Matt in Nick's body. I mean, I don't think even the, I, I, I don't know what I would call you, but hmm, I don't think interesting it's point, even really that important. So now you're playing it as the consciousness itself. Yes, I think that like the creates cons- the person. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I completely agree with that. Mm. 
Because if you think about it from a, I don't know, I mean, just from, from one perspective, your body is merely just a tool for your, your consciousness to interact with the physical world. I definitely agree. I think, <laughs> I think if you, you know, this is going off topic, but if you isolated the consciousness, like put it onto like an, you know, into a robot or an AI system, and like it still had the thought processes of yourself, but no body attached, you would still be called Matt. You would still be probably the same thing. So I think that's like the truest example of what makes a human a uh, human, even though we kind of got away from the big picture and what we were originally focusing on. But no, this is good. This is good. Yeah, I think, I think kind of ta- looping it all back together as I like to do, you know, with the original boat versus now, like now we're talking about humans, I think there's a certain rate, there's a certain aspect about any object that will kind of make it, it's, will kind of keep its original properties or it will make it a totally new thing. So. Yeah. All right. I think that's a, I think that's a fun. Yeah. That sounds very good. So, you know, from all of us here at MVC podcasts, thank you for listening to our third paradox episode. We'll be continuing the series in the future and, you know, let us know in the comments below any other ideas, questions, or comments you have for the team. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.